Hello and welcome to the International Soccer Podcast uh, by Canada Soccer Files. I'm Kevin and I'm Quentin. Today we are looking at Group D of African Cup 223 qualifying, which is already underway. Okay, there is no Quentin. That was just me. And I'm alone today. Uh, my partners are all too busy and uh, I'm going solo today. So I will just continue in my normal voice and I'm sorry about fooling you. I feel tremendous guilt. Anyway, yeah, we did a, a series on teams of the uh, 220, 2021 African Cup. We did that, I think it was in January 2022. Um, uh, so we'll be changing our format a bit as a result. Uh, rather than repeating what we podcasted there, we'll be providing a link in the show notes as well as the times at which each team is discussed in our in that podcast. So interested listeners can go to uh, soccerfiles.captivate.fm or just look up Soccer Files Canada. That's uh, Soccer Files with a PH uh, instead of an F for files. And uh, you can find the um, uh, podcast there to discuss the parts that we're going to skip in this uh, podcast. So actually, um, we have four teams here that did make the African Cup and played in January 2022. So for those teams, we'll be skipping the uh, World Cup overview and the African Cup overview. But again, you can uh, check those links in the show notes if you want to uh, go back and uh, listen to those parts. So we'll repeat that address uh, at the end again. And um, yeah, that uh, information, uh, as I said, will be a more detailed World Cup overview and a detailed look at the finals also of the African Cup tournament. So we'll only cover those things briefly here um, for these teams. Uh, this time we'll be focusing on African Cup qualifying campaigns and on uh, recent history. So um, let's look at the three sections we'll be covering in this podcast. Part one We'll begin with a look at the uh, teams in each group, uh, which pot they came from, and some geographical information about each country. And then in part two, we'll give a team-by-team -team overview with a quick review of their participation and major achievements, an overview of their uh, World Cup and African Cup history. Actually, that's just for teams that weren't in the 2022 African Cup. So, um uh, that won't be here. Uh, what will be here is a deep dive into their African Cup qualifying history and a, a summary and a sense of their recent form. Uh, added to that will be a brief look at their players, especially uh, the ones that have been scoring for them. And finally, in part three, uh, we'll end with a comparison of the teams through their rankings and their head-to-head -head meetings. And uh, then we'll discuss their prospects and uh, our predictions. So thrillingly, we can check out how accurate we are by uh, checking the first two sets of the six set qualification games, which took place in June. So uh, I actually haven't looked at the results uh, so far. And so um, uh, I'm gonna kind of make the prediction and then actually check the result uh, to see if things are going as expected. Uh, and then again, at the end, we'll provide the, the links so that those who want to delve more into the history on the teams can uh, go and check those previous podcasts. Now, uh, I, I sadly do not have any uh, African Cup shirts. And um, uh, sorry, that my phone is ringing there. We'll just hang up. Okay. Um, yes, I don't have any African shirts in my collection, which makes me miserable. But uh, I decided to wear my red Canadian shirt uh, because uh, all four teams in this group have red as part of their colors. Okay, so let us begin with uh, um, introducing the team. So from pot one, we have Egypt. From pot two, Guinea. From pot three is Malawi, and from pot four is Ethiopia, uh, and they're competing for two advancing spots. 
uh, to make it to the 2023 African Cup. So we'll begin with a bit of geography uh, in each country. And um, for podcast listeners, I'm going to do a description. And for YouTube watchers, there's a, a kind of an image uh, of the country on the screen, kind of a map. So uh, we're talking about Egypt. First, Egypt is a mid to large size country located in Northeast Africa. It's surrounded by four countries and the Red Sea. Um, and the Mediterranean Sea also. So uh, we imagine the... Um, uh, we imagine the center of the country as the middle of a clock and going from uh, 11 o'clock to one o'clock is uh, the Mediterranean Sea and at one o'clock uh, is Israel and then uh, Jordan is there's a sliver of Jordan there at one o'clock too. from two o'clock to five o'clock is the Red Sea with Saudi Arabia on the other side. From five to seven o'clock is Sudan in the south there. And from seven o'clock to 11 o'clock on the west side is Libya. So uh, Egypt is a country uh, of uh, just over one million kilometers squared, which makes it the 12th out of 54 countries in Africa. And its population is 101 million. Uh, that was in 2020 making it the third most populous country in Africa. Uh, moving on to Guinea. Uh, Guinea is a small to mid-sized country located in the west of Africa. It's surrounded by six countries and the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, we imagine, again, if we imagine the center of the country as uh, the middle of a clock, going clockwise at 10 o'clock is uh, Guinea-Bissau, from 11 to 12 o'clock is Senegal. From 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock is Mali. And then from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock is Ivory Coast. At 5 o'clock is Liberia. From 6 to 7 o'clock on the south, it is uh, Sierra Leone. And from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock is the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, Guinea is uh, about 250 thousand square kilometers making it the 31st uh, out of 45 countries in Africa so a, a middle-sized uh, country in Africa but its uh, population is uh, slightly uh, higher than that it's uh, about 13 million uh, from a census in 2021 making it the 29th uh, most populous country thirdly is uh, Malawi Malawi is a small, thin, long north to south country in southeast Africa. Uh, it's landlocked and is surrounded by, um, let me see, one, two, three countries. Um, uh, on the clock, uh, going clockwise from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock is Tanzania. And from 3 o'clock to 8 o'clock is Mozambique surrounding uh, Malawi on the south. And then from eight o'clock to 12 o'clock on the west side is Zambia. So Malawi is uh, about 118,000 square kilometers. It's 36th in Africa. So uh, slightly smaller than, um, uh, or quite a bit smaller than Guinea in fact. And the population is around 18.9 million. Uh, in 2021. That's the 20th uh, uh, in Africa. And finally, uh, we have Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a mid to large size country located in northeast Africa. It's a landlocked country surrounded by six other countries. Uh, again, we imagine the center of the country as the middle of a clock. So going clockwise from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock is Eritrea. And two o'clock uh, at two o'clock is the tiny country of Djibouti, and from two o'clock to six o'clock is Somalia on the east side. Uh, these three countries actually form a thin strip that keep Ethiopia landlocked from the Indian Ocean, which is on the other side of those countries. 
And from six o'clock to eight o'clock to the south is Kenya. And uh, from eight o'clock to 10 o'clock on the west is South Sudan. Ethiopia is 1.1 million kilometers, uh, making it the 10th largest country in Africa. So it's actually about three times the size of Germany and twice the size of France. And it has a huge population, the second biggest in Africa and the 12th in the world. It's 117 million people. Okay, so we'll just do a kind of a quick comparison uh, of those, just in case the numbers are kind of hard to put together. So in terms of size, uh, Egypt and uh, Ethiopia are uh, uh, big countries, um, more than a million square kilometers. And then Guinea is 245,000, and Mali half as small as that as 118,000. Um, in terms of population, uh, Ethiopia is the biggest, second biggest in Africa, while Egypt is the third biggest. And then Guinea and Malawi are similar. Uh, well, not too similar, I suppose. Uh, Guinea is um, the smallest in population, 29th in Africa, uh, and Malawi is uh, 20th in Africa. So uh, middle size in terms of population. So I hope that gets an impression of the countries we're dealing with. And we're going to move on now to the uh, to the head-to-head. Uh, -head. Sorry, what am I talking about? We're going to move on to the team-by-team um, team-by-team uh, team team overview of each team. So Egypt uh, is nicknamed the Pharaohs. And uh, we'll begin with... Uh, um, an overview of their participation and major achievements. So Egypt is uh, by far the oldest team in Africa and have the honor of being the first African team to qualify for the World Cup in 1934. Uh, withdrawing though from most cups until 1974, they completed qualification only once during that time in 1954. From 1974 though, they participated consistently it stands to reason they were also involved in the first African Cup, which was in 1957, and are, in fact, one of the four founding members of CAF. Uh, the other members are Ethiopia, which is in this group, and then Sudan and South Africa. Uh, they did withdraw from the African Cup twice in a row in 1965 and 1968, uh, as well as once in 1982. Um, okay, and then in terms of achievement, they have reached the World Cup three times in 1934, 1990, and 2018. Uh, and they did not pass the group stage in any of those. Uh, in terms of African Cup titles, they're the most successful team in Africa, having won it seven times. And uh, this includes the first two times and then three in a row from 2006 to 2012. We'll see how they qualified for those cups. Now we are gonna skip the uh, kind of the overview of the World Cup. But once again, if you check the show notes, you can find a link and also a time, the time in that uh, other podcast where we discuss Egypt. Uh, today, we are going to focus on uh, just their recent World Cup campaign uh, in 2022. So that uh, started with a bye in round one of three. Um, uh, only the 28 bottom teams in Africa had to play in that round. And of course, Egypt is, uh, is uh, among the top teams there. So uh, in round two of three... Um, they went undefeated in, in round two of three, but they did give up away draws to Gabon and Angola. Uh, nevertheless, they finished well ahead of Gabon and Libya, who were tied for second, as the teams below scrapped among themselves. And uh, Egypt finished a comfortable first in round two of three, going undefeated. Uh, round three of three saw them in a rematch, actually, of the recent African Cup final. Uh, and the result was the same. They lost on penalties to Senegal 
both in the African Cup uh, this year and in the uh, final qualification playoff. So uh, bad luck for them. Uh, they played very defensively and, uh, and uh, you know, kind of kept things uh, to a low score, but uh, lost on penalties both times. So, <clears throat> excuse me. That was kind of an interesting, uh, uh, an interesting matchup, both in the African Cup and in the uh, qualifying, because uh, two of the uh, Liverpool stars, uh, the uh, the Premier League English Premier League Liverpool, uh, Mohamed Salah is kind of the main man on Egypt, and Sadio Mane, the main man on Senegal. So uh, they were kind of going head to head. Actually, each of them missed their first two penalties. Uh, each of them missed their penalties uh, in the shootout, uh, including Mohamed Salah, who shot over the goal. Uh, sorry, I think each team uh, missed their first two penalties, and one of those penalty takers was Mohamed Salah, who shot over the goal. So no uh, World Cup for Egypt uh, this time. And uh, our main attention for this podcast is the African Cup. But again, we're going to skip the African Cup overview. And uh, you can check the previous podcast for that. In this podcast, we're going to go into detail on African Cup qualifying. uh, um, So we're going to divide this into parts because they have a long history. Uh, So uh, first, part one, beginning uh, to 1970. So, as mentioned, they're one of the founding members of CAF, or, uh, and they took advantage of the early years where they were not where there were not many teams competing. So, 1957, the first edition, and uh, 1959, the second, had no qualification rounds, uh, and then Egypt qualified qualified as defending champions uh, in 1962 and then qualified automatically when Uganda withdrew in 1963. So the same thing appeared to be happening in 1965 when they automatically qualified after Morocco and Nigeria withdrew. But then they themselves withdrew over disagreements with host Tunisia. Uh, So still no qualification run uh, up until 19. Uh, up until this point. In 1968, uh, they beat Libya in the first round of qualification and Uganda in the second leg uh, of the final round. But the six-day war with Israel began, um, uh, it began actually the day after their second game with Uganda, which forced them to withdraw. Okay, uh, second period, part two, 1970 to 1990. So it, uh, it was only in 1970 that they completed their first qualification campaign. That was the sixth uh, African Cup. Uh, Somalia withdrew from the first round in 1970, and they bested Algeria uh, to gain entry into the Cup. 1972 uh, was a rare failure to qualify. Uh, they lost out to Morocco uh, on goal difference. They hosted in 1974, though, and had easy opponents in the two rounds with Burundi and Tanzania in the following edition in 1976. However, they once again failed to qualify in 1978, this time bested by Tunisia. After that, and a withdrawal in 1982, uh, that was due to a political crisis between Egypt and the tournament host Libya, Uh, They qualified consistently from 1982 until recent times. Uh, They required penalties to win over Congo in the first round of 1984, but bested Tunisia to advance. They qualified as host in 1986 and defending champions in 1988, and then 1999 um, was an unremarkable qualification but uh, a notable cup uh, in that they lost all the games in the cup. That brings us to 1990, and part three is 1992 to 2006. 1992 saw the tournament expand to 12 teams and group qualification, uh, rather than the two-team knockout rounds uh, that had mostly taken place before. 
Uh, they went undefeated in their first uh, uh, in their first qualification in 1992, but 1994 was much tighter, where they finished second ahead of Morocco only by scoring one more goal. Um, uh, the top four teams there finishing within two points of each other. So that was tight. Uh, actually, 1996, the Cup expanded to 16 teams, and their 1996 campaign was convincing. Uh, but 1998 actually began with four games winless. However, they won their last two over Senegal and Ethiopia and finished second on goal difference ahead of Senegal although they were well behind group winner in Morocco. Nevertheless, 1998, they made it to the cup. Uh, campaigns were solid from 2000 uh, onwards with uh, first place finishers, um, first place finishers in the qualifying group. Okay, and then the uh, last part, part four, I think it is, uh, is 2006 to 2017. It's not my fault that Egypt has such a long African Cup qualifying history. Uh, their hosting in 2006 did give them automatic quali or qualification, but uh, their title wins in that cup and in the following two cups did not. Nevertheless, qualifications remained solid until 2012 when, as defending champions, they had a disastrous qualification finishing last in a group behind, get this, Niger, South Africa, and Sierra Leone. Um, yes, finishing uh, last despite going undefeated at home. And then, believe it or not, they plummeted to even greater depths in 2013, bested in an early round by the weak Central African Republic and knocked out of the cup. And then it became three misses in a row, unimaginable, uh, when they came third in a tough group behind Algeria and Senegal and failed to qualify in 2015, too. Uh, however, they recovered in 2017, in fact, knocking out Nigeria in the qualifying. So let's see how they have done since by looking at the uh, recent tournaments individually. Now, uh, in uh, 2019, uh, they exchanged home wins with uh, Tunisia. Uh, the first game of the series there, they lost away in Tunisia, but that would be their only uh, loss. And they won the home leg on an injury time goal. Um, uh, but they would have finished uh, second. Uh, they would have finished... Um, a second behind Tunisia anyway, uh, because they had fewer away goals. Uh, but they might have finished first had they not tied uh, Niger in their last game. So they finished second in the qualifying group uh, with the newly named uh, Eswatini, that used to be known as Swaziland. And um, Eswatini and Niger were the bottom teams uh, in the group. Niger finishing third. Uh, as host of the Cup, uh, an unconvincing start with a narrow win over Zimbabwe, but they went on to beat Uganda and Congo DR uh, to finish first in the group stage. Um, again, they're hosting this Cup, so uh, their run came to an ugly end at the hand of uh, unfancied South Africa, who scored the only goal of the game at 85 minutes. So uh, they were very disappointed to be knocked out uh, as tournament hosts in the round of 16 by South Africa. So uh, good qualification or a solid enough qualification there, but um, not a good result in the tournament. Let's see if they did any better in 2021. Well, they came first in their qualifying group, uh, although it was uh, uh, not really a convincing performance. Uh, despite going undefeated, they tied in the opener at home to uh, Kenya, who ended up being uh, to Kenya, who uh, they ended up tying away also. And then they tied uh, Comoros in their second game, 
um, but they won the other two games. So a poor start with uh, two ties against weakish teams, but uh, they came through in the end. In the tournament, they were paired with Nigeria in a fairly tough group stage or uh, fairly tough uh, main opponents, I guess. Uh, but they beat Guinea-Bissau and Sudan to finish second in the group. Uh, all of the games were decided by a single goal. And uh, in the finals, all of their games went beyond extra time as they beat Ivory Coast on penalties, Morocco in extra time, uh, that was actually the only game that saw any goals was the win over Morocco. The rest was 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, in, the, in the semifinals, um, it was Cameroon who they beat on penalties. And then, as we mentioned earlier, they lost to Senegal also on penalties in the final there. So a second place finish, and that seems to be a bit of a recent theme with uh, Egypt going quite far in the competitions, but kind of uh, falling at the uh, at the last stage. So coming out of it feeling disappointed. Um, let's just take a, a quick look at their players. Um, a lot of people are familiar with their biggest star, Mohamed Salah. Uh, but they have a lot of players, um, a lot of players um, to choose from. So Mohamed Trezeguet is very popular uh, in Egypt, and Mohamed El Neni uh, plays for Arsenal. Uh, most of the players, though, they uh, most of the players play in Egypt, which has a fairly strong local league, and. Um, they have uh, Omar Marmouche, who plays for Stuttgart in Germany, and Mustafa Mohamed, who plays for Galatasaray in Turkey. Those players are both uh, forwards. And, uh, yeah, we, they are particularly strong in defense. So um, their defenders are um, uh, Ahmed Hegazi, who is... Uh, getting a little old he's in his 30s now he has 78 caps for them and is maybe um uh well maybe on his way uh out but uh um yeah we won't linger but um just basically all of their starters are are pretty big names i maybe mentioned mohammed uh, abdel monem uh because uh, he got a starting position in the cup and uh and looked quite good okay uh let's go on to uh just a summary of egypt and then a review of their recent form so egypt is the oldest team in africa and as mentioned have the most african cup titles which poses them as an african power however overall they're not as successful as nigeria particularly some lapses like their World Cup record and a long period of middling results from 1998 to 2004. And then uh, three recent African Cup uh, absences in a row uh, kind of make them more of an intermittent African power. Excuse me. Uh, um, yeah, their hopes being raised and then dashed is something of a theme for Egypt. Uh, in terms of their form, they came out of missing their third uh, third African Cup in a row in 2015 with a good qualification over Nigeria in 2017. And they went on in 2018 to reach their first World Cup since 1990. They went into that cup with high hopes, but they disappointed and also had high expectations going into the African Cup which they hosted in 2019, but uh, were disappointed again. The 2021 African Cup final and their final playoff for the World Cup 2022 both met with losses on penalties to, to Senegal. So again, a disappointment at the final step there. Uh, but it shouldn't be overlooked that they are reaching high levels in most of these campaigns. Um, but being consistently foiled from reaching their goals kind of overshadows their success. That brings us to the end of uh, Egypt. And 
we let's move on to Guinea, the second team in the group. Uh, so uh, Guinea's nickname is Silly National, and that means uh, the national elephants. And we'll begin with a, an overview of their tournament participation and major achievements. So Guinea entered their first World Cup in 1966, but they withdrew uh, joining the African Asian boycott that year. And their entry was rejected by FIFA in 1970. So 1974 was their first World Cup qualification. Uh, they participated consistently since, but they were disqualified in 2002 uh, due to government interference in the sports. Uh, they were also disqualified from their first attempt uh, entering the African Cup in 1963. They had bested Nigeria in qualifying, but were then punished for failing to provide neutral officials. Uh, their first completed qualification then was in 1965, and apart from the same ban in 2002 mentioned above, they've never failed to complete qualification. In terms of achievement, they've never reached the World Cup. In recent time, when they've reached, uh, in recent times, they've reached the African Cup more than half the time. But their best result was way back in 1976, where they took second place. Uh, in more recent times, the quarterfinals is their best results, and they've reached that uh, a few times. Okay, uh, because we covered them in uh, for the for the. Uh, African Cup earlier this year. We're going to skip the World Cup overview, but we will take a look at their most recent campaign in, uh, for the 2022 World Cup. So they received a bye in round one. Uh, again, only the bottom 28 teams played that preliminary round. Uh, and perhaps distracted by a civil war in their country, it was a poor showing uh, for the second seeded team uh, tying all games with Guinea-Bissau and Sudan and losing both to group winner Morocco. So they finished third uh, in this round. It was round two of three, um, the third round uh, being just a playoff, uh, a single playoff knockout. Uh, so they finished third here and probably would just like to put this campaign behind themselves um, there was an incident uh, uh, when the Moroccan team arrived for their game in Guinea. Uh, they woke up to a coup in the country and gunfire in the streets. So um, both the Moroccan, Mor Moroccans and uh, uh, Guinean players who, who were with teams abroad were trapped. Uh, trapped in the country until arrangements were, were made for them to get out, although they did get out fairly quickly um, there. So not a great campaign for uh, Guinea, and they await their first World Cup. Uh, we'll also skip the African Cup overview, again available through the show notes, and go straight to their uh, African Cup qualifying in detail. Now, as I said, all the teams in this group have very long histories. Uh, theirs is a, a little shorter than Egypt's, but um, let's divide it into parts, beginning from uh, the, their first cup to 1970. So as mentioned, their African Cup history began in disgrace. Uh, they won a qualifying round over Nigeria and legitimately did well to tie the away leg. However, their home win was voided when they uh, were ruled to have uh, failed to provide neutral officials, and so they were disqualified from the tournament. Uh, but qualifying was competitive on their return, and they finished second in a group of three behind Senegal in 1965, and tied on top with Senegal in a group of three in 1968. However, a, a playoff match uh, after the group stage with Senegal um, uh, uh, they lost. I'm kind of losing my syntax here, but uh, there we have it. So they lost that playoff in 1968. However, Senegal features in 1972 
1970 also, I should say, uh, as they beat Senegal in the second round of qualification and reached their first cup there in 1970. Uh, in 1970. Okay, part two is 1970 to 1990. After falling to Mali in 1972, they tied them in both legs and then beat them in penalties in 1974, uh, qualifying for their second cup. And 1976 was even better. Uh, that saw them in their finest form, going undefeated all the way through the qualifying, uh, through the qualifying to a second place finish in the cup. Tunisia prevented their progress in 1978. But in 1984, uh, they beat, sorry, um, this should be 1980. Uh, but in 1980, they beat Cameroon on penalties in the first round and Zaire on away goals in the second round to reach their fourth cup. Uh, another narrow failure in 1982 saw them losing on the away goals rule after two ties with Ethiopia. And that ended a competitive era, having reached four out of the six uh, African Cups up until nineteen, um, up until nineteen eighty, and being competitive otherwise. Uh, but nineteen eighty four was a low, losing both legs to Togo in round one, and aside from beating Gambia in a preliminary along the way, they went winless over the next three campaigns all the way to 1990, knocked out in the first round by Ghana, Senegal, and Nigeria, respectively. That moves us into part three, 1992 to 2004. Uh, again, from 1992, group stages came into play as the tournament expanded. Uh, but 1992 for Guinea was a middling third place finish. And 19, uh, but 1994 though, uh, uh, saw them tied on top with Burundi. Uh, a final playoff game went scoreless, but Guinea went through to the cup on penalties, this their fifth cup in 1994. And 1996 saw another expansion of the cup, this time to 16 teams, and uh, features big qualification round teams, uh, five team qualification rounds in uh, 1996. So they were undefeated at home there, winning four of their five games. And uh, they also earned a win and a tie on the road. And that record would seem uh, to be enough for one of the two advancing spots. But it wasn't. Uh, Angola and Mozambique proved more consistent. And uh, Guinea had to settle for third place. 1998, however, did see them back in the cup. Uh, they were gifted a qualification, which they would have won anyway, uh, but Sierra Leone and Central African Republic both dropped out, uh, making it that much easier. Uh, they finished third behind Togo in 2000, though, so didn't reach the cup then, and they were disqualified for government interference in 2002. Okay, moving on to the last section, uh, 2004 to 2011 sorry, to 2017. So a second strong period began for Guinea in 2004 with three quarterfinal finishes in a row and with solid qualifying campaigns where they were undefeated at home as well as earning some points on the road, including a win in Algeria in 2008. But they returned to on and off uh, qualification form after that. Uh, failing in 2010, but excellent in 2012, where they finished first in the group, going undefeated home and away, and knocking out second place Nigeria. Uh, 2013 uh, is kind of known uh, because it was a shortened qualification, uh, shortened down to knockout rounds. And actually, they received buys in their first two rounds, uh, participants in the 2012 African Cup, uh, perhaps unfairly, uh, got buys to the third round of qualifying in the 2013 African Cup. Anyway, there they were in the third round, uh, only to be knocked out by Niger. 
uh, on goal difference. So their yo-yoing form uh, kind of continued until 2015. Uh, after the week 2013, they were strong in 2015. Another solid campaign to reach the cup, where they again finished in the quarterfinals. And they came third behind Zimbabwe and Swaziland in 2017, failing to reach that cup. Let's take a look-see uh, at their uh, two most recent campaigns then. In 2019, they started uh, qualification excellently with a win over Ivory Coast and followed up with two home wins over Central African Republic and Rwanda there. Uh, that proved enough. Uh, that proved enough despite uh, tying their three games after that. Um, uh, it, it was enough to reach the cup and in fact enough for uh, first place uh, although the top two teams advanced there uh, them along with Ivory Coast but uh, in the cup they were taken by surprise by an impressive Madagascar um, uh, tying them in game one actually Madagascar ended up winning the group uh, Guinea lost to Nigeria in the second game on a single goal and, uh, but they beat Burundi in the third game, uh, thanks in part to a red card uh, at 12 minutes to Burundi. And uh, that was enough. They finished third in the group, but they were one of the third place finishes to advance. So Madagascar and Nigeria ahead of them, but Guinea going through. But that uh, third place finish paired them with the first place finisher from another group, and it turned out to be Algeria. And they lost heavily to Algeria, who went on to win the cup. And they were out in the round of 16. Um, okay, let's move on to the 2021 African Cup, where they received a bye in the first round of qualification. Uh, but then they uh, actually bested uh, Mali, uh, winning at home and tying away. But they were less consistent, so ended up finishing the group behind uh, behind Mali, but ahead of Namibia, who they lost to in the last game. And uh, they also tied Chad. So not a convincing campaign, but they did make it through. Uh, they finished second in that qualifying group behind Mali. Uh, in the tournament, they beat Malawi in their opener, and they tied uh, eventual champion Senegal in the group stage. But uh, they lost to Zimbabwe in their last game, uh, but nevertheless finished second in the group stage and advanced. Uh, in the second round, sorry, in the round of 16, uh, they were somewhat fortunately paired with uh, Gambia, but the uh, unlikely Gambia won the game uh, one nothing and uh, Guinea was again out at the round of 16. Okay, so they are getting through, uh, they are getting through um, the group stages of Cups in the last two campaigns. Let's take a look at uh, some of their players here and the players scoring for them um, are kind of uh, different players every time so nobody outstanding of course their probably biggest name is Naby Keita who's a midfielder for uh, Liverpool and um, uh, their biggest forward is probably uh, Mamadou Kane uh, sorry no that's that's not true at all uh, well they don't actually have a player who who has a lot of goals uh, here it's probably uh, Seiduba Suma who has uh, nine goals in, in 32 games, or else uh, uh, Francois Camano, uh, although he hasn't been scoring recently uh, too much. He did get a goal in the 2022 uh, World Cup. So um, uh, uh, I probably mentioned in previous podcasts that uh, Fran uh, Florentine Pogba, who's the brother of... Um, uh, Paul Pogba from Manchester United uh, plays for uh, Guinea, but he's kind of on again and off again, and he wasn't selected for the uh, 
for the recent African Cup. Uh, so uh, the most capped defender is uh, Isiaga Silla. Uh, he has 66 caps. And again, uh, Nabi Keita, who's the captain, is probably their second most experienced player in terms of caps with uh, with 48 caps. Okay, I should mention uh, Ibrahim Conte, uh, although he's getting a bit old, is, a, is another um, another highly capped player for them. So, um, you know, no really outstanding figures. I'd say probably Nabi Keita is the most outstanding figure, but, uh, you know, um, uh, he's not outstanding when you actually watch their games. He's more of a a kind of a solid player who pops up from time to time uh, rather than being a superstar who kind of is very noticeable on the field. Uh, let's finish with a kind of a summary of Guinea and an overview of their recent form. So they've hovered between reaching the final round of World Cup qualification and reaching the African Cup, uh, somewhat frustratingly on again, off again, especially in the African Cup. Uh, when they reached the African Cup in recent times, they've been passing the group stage and uh, uh, they usually pass the group stage, uh, but then they usually get knocked out at the, the next step beyond the group stage. So this does show improvement over the previous century where they reached the cup less often and got knocked out of the group stage. Uh, the notable exception being their second place finish in 1976. Beyond that exception, though, there does seem something of a solid ceiling preventing them from joining the top teams in Africa. In terms of form, uh, uh, with increasing regularity, they reach the final round of World Cup qualification and reach one step beyond the group stage uh, of, of the African Cup. But they have not broken through those ceilings, uh, even when presented with a glorious opportunity in 2021, where they were paired with Gambia in the round of 16. So um, a bit of a ceiling to them, which they'll be hoping to break through. Let's move on to our third team, Malawi, uh, who are nicknamed the Flames. Again, we covered them in 2021, so we won't be doing a World Cup and African Cup overview, but if you go to the links, you can get that information from our previous podcast. We will do an overview of their tournament participation and major achievements, though. So uh, they are a fairly se uh, senior team by African standards, having entered the World Cup from 1978 onwards and withdrawing only once in 1994. They're very consistent in the African Cup, too, participating in uh, participating from 1976 without fail. In terms of achievement, they've never reached the World Cup and usually don't reach the final round of qualification. Uh, but they have qualified for the African Cup uh, in 1994 and 2010, but did not pass the group stage either time. Okay, so for the World Cup, we will just go... Oh, my phone is ringing. I'm a popular dude. We will uh, just look at... Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, it'll it'll go away soon. Um, we will look at their World Cup 2022 qualifying uh, here, and uh, they participated in round one of three, being one of the uh, 28 weakest teams in Africa, and uh, and uh, they tied away in Botswana, scoreless, and then they won one nothing at home. That single goal. Uh, coming on a penalty 81 minutes into the second leg. So um, just not convincingly getting by Botswana in round one, but nevertheless making it to the group stage in round two. Uh, there, uh, uh, sorry, they managed only a win over Mozambique, uh, a home win over Mozambique, and they lost away to them. and uh, But it was a tough group. Cameroon and Ivory Coast were the other teams. And they lost all games. So uh, not much hope there 
uh, and they finished last in the group behind Mozambique. All right, let's move on to our uh, African Cup uh, uh, qualifying in detail, and we'll uh, divide this into four sections too, beginning uh, from the beginning in 1976 to 1992 is part one. Uh, Malawi, uh, first enter qualification in 1976, and they tied Zambia 3-3 away in the first leg, only to be crushed at home uh, by a score of 1-6. Uh, both both the good away result. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's take a closer look at that. 3-3 away in the first leg and losing 6-1 at home in the second leg. And both of those kind of uh, establish a pattern or, or kind of indicate a pattern. Uh, the first being the good away result and the second being giving up an advantage, uh, which we'll see uh, throughout their qualification history uh, kind of became trademarks for them. Although, you know, not all the time. Uh, they fell to weak Mauritius in 1978 but won their first qualification round in 1980, which featured a 5-1 win over Madagascar in the first round. However, they lost both legs to Zambia in the second round and uh, didn't reach the cup. 1982 saw them bested by Zimbabwe uh, in the first round there, but in 1984, they beat them home and away. Uh, they benefited from the withdrawal of Zaire in the second round of 1984. And uh, in the third round, were kind of uh, lucky to get the partner they did. Uh, the third round featured other giants squaring off, like Egypt versus Tunisia and Morocco versus Nigeria. But Malawi uh, was paired with Madagascar, uh, a fairly gentle pairing. And Malawi took good advantage of it to reach their first cup in 1984. In 1986, they tied Mozambique in both legs, but went out on penalties. And they lost both games to Ivory Coast in 1988. And after beating Swaziland in the first round in 1990, they fell to Kenya. Uh, here too, they lost at home, but tied away. Okay, part two covers 1992 to 1998, a kind of an eventful uh, section here. Once again, uh, 1992 began group stage qualification with the expansion of the Cup to 12 teams, uh, but they only earned a draw in their group with Zimbabwe and Congo. 1994 was a tough group, but it was the start of their most competitive period. They started excellently beating Egypt uh, and tying Mali at home and then becoming one of the very few teams to win a game in Morocco. So uh, a great three-game start there. However, they squandered the advantage they had built up by losing their last three games and finishing behind them all. 1996 was an odd campaign uh, they tied Zaire, Cameroon, and Zimbabwe on the road, but they earned home points only against Zimbabwe, uh, winning that game. They also beat Lesotho away and would have qualified by beating them at home in the last game. But Lesotho withdrew, and then all of their games were cancelled, all of their results were cancelled. So this allowed Cameroon, who had lost to Lesotho away, to uh, steal second place, leaving Malawi in third. So an unfortunate 1996. Uh, 1998 was also close, finishing just a point behind second place Mozambique, who advanced. And with that, uh, a period of relative strength was over and a string of weak campaigns followed. <clears throat> Part three, 2000 to 2010. They lost both legs of a preliminary to Namibia in 2000 and to Uganda in 2002. And a single win with three losses had them finishing third in a group of three in 2004 and 2008. 
uh, yeah, both of them were groups of three there. In 2006 and 2010, it was World Cup qualification that was the uh, that was the entryway to the African Cups. And though they fell far short in 2006, their good World Cup qualification in 2010 afforded them their second appearance in the African Cup in 2010. Uh, but we're not talking about the finals. But they uh, failed to pass the group stage again. 2012 to 2014 is part four, uh, our final section of their African Cup qualifying history. 2012 was impressive, going undefeated in a five-team group. But it was two wins and six draws, which only earned them third place. A quick knockout qualification in system. Uh, system in 2013 we've mentioned before uh, that saw them lose both legs to Ghana in the final round while in 2015 they finished third in their group in a middling campaign that got worse in 2017 where two ties on the road was of no help keeping them out of last place uh, but let's uh, look at the recent campaigns to see that they could burst out of this torpor with the expansion of the cup to 24 teams. So looking closely at uh, 2019, uh, they were undefeated at home, tying uh, both uh, group winners Morocco and Cameroon, as well as beating Comoro. So uh, pretty good at home there. However, they lost all three on the road. They finished tied with Comoros, but took third place in the qualifying group based on a better goals record in their head-to-head -head meeting. And uh, not that it matters because third place uh, was not an advancing spot. So just for, um, just for pride, they uh, will be happy to have finished third ahead of Comoros. Let's look at 2021. So they received a bye in the first round. And here an improved uh, performance saw them uh, reaching the cup for the first time since 2010. Uh, whereas they usually draw at home, they converted these to wins, which was uh, the difference here. They won home and away against South Sudan, uh, giving them enough to make the last game a crucial battle with Uganda. And uh, uh, going in one point behind, uh, such that a draw would not do, they won the home game and they leapfrogged Uganda into second place in the qualifying group. Uh, Burkina Faso uh, having finished first. So uh, competitive qualification with Uganda, which they won and made it to the group stage. Uh, in the group stage, they started with a loss to Guinea, who they meet here. Uh, but in the second game, they beat Zimbabwe. And in the third game, uh, they, well, impressively tied Senegal, but uh, oh, no, Senegal uh, uh, actually had a pretty bad group stage there. So it really was impressive. I was thinking uh, Senegal had already uh, secured uh, a passing spot. But that's not true. So uh, a tie with the eventual champions uh, in a fairly uh, good uh, group stage. Uh, it only earned them third spot, though. But third spot was enough to advance and they advanced to uh, play Morocco in the round of 16. And uh, they lost that game uh, one to two. So knocked out by uh, Morocco. And actually, you know, when you finish the uh, group stage in third place, you're usually facing a pretty tough team in the following round. Okay, uh, let's take a look uh, briefly at their players. So the players scoring for them are uh, seem to be Gerald Fieri's name uh, coming up again and again. And also uh, Gabadino Mahango uh, is a big scorer for them. Uh, uh, their, their most veteran player is... Uh, uh, Chiukepo Mus, uh, Musawoya, sorry if I'm butchering that name, uh, but at 33 years old, he's probably on his way out. Uh, Peter Banda uh, is a forward for them who has 18 caps and zero goals. He was actually left out of the 
African Cup roster to everyone's surprise and then uh, brought back in uh, just before the tournament began. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm not as familiar with this team. Uh, I see Sa Stanley Sanudo is a veteran defenseman. Uh, and he's only 27, so he has a few more years left in him. Uh, but John Banda is a familiar name in the midfield um, uh, with 80 caps now. And, uh, yeah, again, main scorers, uh, Gabadino Mahango. And uh, actually, uh, Musawoya uh, does have a lot of goals for them. Uh, okay, well, that is a, just a quick look at their players, and we will um, move on to a summary and an overview of their recent form. So, uh, they're at a level where reaching the African Cup or the later stages of the World Cup qualifying is something of a poison challenge since they would be uh, a poison chalice since they seem outclassed if they do reach those rounds. Uh, they were lucky to reach the two World Cups they did, and apart from a competitive period in the mid-1990s, they never really came close otherwise. Uh, they do earn a few points in almost every campaign, though, so are not to be taken lightly, especially since they earn more points on the road than uh, most African teams. In terms of form, uh, in the 2018 World Cup, they went out in a preliminary round uh, for the first time since 1998, uh, their 2017 and 19 African Cup campaigns were middling, um, but better in 2021, and they deserve to reach that cup. And uh, um, perhaps it points to a better future for them. Probably one of the teams that will benefit a lot from the expansion of the Cup to 24 teams since uh, it, they were always, uh, well, uh, on the edges, maybe putting it generously, but uh, uh, probably have a better chance now. Okay, I'm getting a bit tongue-tied there, so let's move on to uh, Ethiopia. Ethiopia, whose nickname is the Walias. Uh, I believe that's a... Uh, a wild goat. And uh, we'll begin with an overview of their participation and achievements. Okay. Uh, they're one of the oldest teams in Africa, as I think has come up previously in the podcast. They're one of the four founding members of CAF. They have a proud history because of their domination in the late 50s and early 60s and uh, to a lesser extent through the 1960s. Um, that's where they actually should be, being one of the second largest populations in Africa. But uh, since, since let's say, 1970, uh, they've been inconsistent and often weak. Uh, they entered their first World Cup in 1962. Their entry having been rejected by FIFA in 1958. I haven't tracked down the reason. Uh, for that yet. Uh, they joined the African-Asian boycott in 1966 and also didn't enter in 1990 and 1998. Finally, they missed in 2010 due to a suspension. Uh, the African Cup is similar except they entered from 1957 with no break in the early years, but they did end up withdrawing them from uh, three of four tournaments between 1986 and 1992. And they also withdrew in 2000. And uh, that same suspension mentioned for the World Cup also applied for the 2010 edition, 2010 edition of the African Cup. So a bit patchy in their participation there. Uh, in terms of achievement, they didn't reach the final round of qualifying, even in their early years of African strength. However, uh, an unlikely excellent performance in recent years saw them reach a final playoff in 2014, although, although they did lose that playoff. Their African Cup success came in the early years when, when there were few teams participating. They finished in the top four in five of the first six editions, 
uh, from 1957 to 1968. And they won the cup when they hosted in 1962. So uh, again, we have covered uh, Ethiopia because they were in the 20, uh, I never know what to call it, 2021 African Cup, which took place in 2022. So I'll just say they took part in the uh, recent African Cup. So we will be skipping the World Cup overview and the African Cup overview, but uh, you can go back and uh, check that we'll get details at the end however we will look at their most recent uh, qualifying campaign uh, for the world cup in 2022 and that started with a, a contentious battle with lesotho in the first round a preliminary round that the bottom 28 teams played uh, but because they scored a goal away it was scoreless at home but they scored a goal away in a 1-1 draw in the second uh, game they pass through uh, on the away goals rule uh, so that was a weak start but they look slightly better in the uh, cup uh, they uh, uh, sorry uh, I, I just wanted to mention that uh, the win over Lesotho was, was good because uh, Lesotho was ranked slightly higher than them uh, going into it but uh, uh, they were close enough that it was expected to be a tight battle. I'm going to pry myself away from that preliminary round and talk about the main round. Uh, they, uh, they did well to overcome third seed Zimbabwe, uh, and they bested them as well as finishing ahead of them. Uh, they also earned a home draw with Ghana, which almost spoiled Ghana's campaign, who were in a bitter fight with uh, South Africa. But Ethiopia lost twice to South Africa. So a respectively competitive campaign with a third place finish. And uh, uh, right, so let's move on to their uh, African Cup qualifying history. I'm just going to uh, cough and take a drink of water for a moment here. I'm back. All right, and this is a long history uh, uh, again, so we'll divide it into uh, three parts in the case of uh, Ethiopia. So the beginning, uh, part one goes from the beginning uh, until 1982. So as mentioned, they're founding members of CAF, the Council of African Football, and uh, they benefited from uh, the lack of uh, competition in the in the early years but they were good uh, 1957 and 59 had no qualification and they received automatic qualification in the following one in 1962 uh, because they hosted and uh, they won it so in 1963 they qualified automatically as defending champions uh, so 1965 the uh what fifth tournament became their first qualification campaign, which they won over Sudan and Uganda, uh, Kenya having been disqualified from the group. Uh, 1968 saw them hosting again. And in 1970, they had an easy passage uh, beating Tanzania home and away. So their results uh, in the finals had been growing weaker though, uh, with more and more teams entering the tournament and their vulnerability began to show even in qualifying. So they were knocked out in the first round by Kenya in 1972, and that was the first time they failed to qualify uh, since the beginning in 1957. But they also uh, failed in 1974, knocked out by Tanzania. And they qualified only by hosting again in 1976. Uh, Uganda and Libya prevented their passage in 1978 and 1980, respectively. And uh, 1982 saw their last successful campaign of the early era, uh, beating Rwanda in round one and Guinea on the away goals rule after two draws in round two uh, to reach the 1982 African Cup. But... Uh, um, it was another knockout at the group stage, and actually the last four cups uh, they had reached were group
group stage knockouts. Okay, moving on to part two, 1982 to 1998. Togo knocked them out in 1984, and they entered a troubled era, withdrawing from three of the next four editions. They completed qualification in 1990, winning at home to Egypt in the first leg, but thrashed 1-6 to six in the second. 1992 saw the tournament expand to 12 teams, and uh, as we've mentioned, a group stage uh, system. Ethiopia completed the first two games, but the second game was a home loss to Tunisia, and that resulted in all of the players and the coaching staff being fired, uh, and which uh, forced, it, forced them to withdraw from the competition. Despite this, they were not only back in action in 1994, but they went undefeated at home. However, they finished third or fourth in the group, third or four in the group. 1996 was similar, a large 16 group where they lost only one game at home, but as in 1994, lost all on the road. So despite the good home record, and they are very strong at home even to this day, they finished last of six there. In 1998, uh, we saw them tie Uganda twice in a preliminary round, but advance on penalties. Mm -hmm. However, they earned only a single draw in a tough group stage uh, in the next round, and they finished last in the group in 1998. Part 3, 2000-2017. After a withdrawal in 2000, they were scheduled to play Eritrea with whom they, uh, Eritrea, with whom they were at war. Uh, so they withdrew. Uh, they fell to Zambia in a 2002 preliminary, but did better in 2004, winning all games at home. Uh, they lost all away games, though, and finished third behind Guinea and Niger, but ahead of Liberia. Their weak World Cup campaigns in 2006 and 2010 prevented their passage in those years, qualification being based on World Cup, and last place in a group in between in 2008 also left them out of the cup. 2012 was a third place finish in their qualifying group. Uh, we've mentioned that 2013 was a shortened qualification uh, featuring knockout games, and they tied Benin twice in the first round, advancing on away goals, and then passed the second round the same way with a 3-5 to five loss in Sudan, but a 2 nothing win at home. And if you picture that in your mind, you'll see that they won on, uh, on away goals, having scored more away goals. So, in 2013, they had reached the Cup for the first time since, see if you can remember, 1982. It was followed by a weak campaign in 2015, though, earning only a single draw at home, but surprisingly winning over Mali away. 2017 was much better, a second-place finish. It was made easy uh, with the weak Seychelles and Lesotho in the group. However, they did almost beat Algeria at home, and uh, it was only an Algerian equaliser in the 85th minute that, uh, that uh, prevented them from winning that game. Um, but uh, it wasn't enough, and Algeria advanced, uh, only the first-place team advancing in that 2017 African Cup qualifying campaign. Whew, we're finished. Uh, but we are going to take a look at the two most recent campaigns to see uh, how they've done. And in 2019... Uh, we saw that uh, they managed uh, only uh, a home draw with Kenya, but they lost away to them, and then they lost both le uh, both legs to group winner Ghana uh, to finish last of three in the qualifying group. Actually, uh, they had beaten Sierra Leone at home, but that game was annulled when Sierra Leone was disqualified, so... Uh, a bit unfortunate there, uh, and no African Cup in 2019. However, uh, 
they did qualify in 2021. Uh, they came into qualification actually as the fourth seeded team in the group. Uh, and in, in uh, they were just one one place in FIFA rankings above the teams that were qu- required to undergo a preliminary preliminary round. Uh, so, but they did get a bye through the first round, and they won all home games uh, in in the group stage. But they lost all away. Uh, Ivory Coast winning the group and second seeded Niger coming last. Okay, so they benefited from uh, Madagascar's spectacular failure. Uh, Madagascar needed only a home win over Niger in the last game. Uh, And Madagascar had beaten Niger 6-2 away. Uh, However, they only managed to draw in the last game, which allowed Ethiopia to leapfrog uh, to leapfrog Madagascar into second place and into a qualifying position. So uh, they did reach the African Cup in 2021. In the tournament, uh, that started badly. <laughs> started badly when they got a red card just 12 minutes into their first game, and that uh, uh, ended up being a loss to uh, Cape Verde. Uh, and in the second game, they uh, they were soundly beaten by host Cameroon, but they did well in the third game to tie uh, Burkina Faso. So a really tough group uh, all in all, uh, especially since Cape Verde were uh, in fairly good form in the tournament. So uh, a last place finish for uh, Ethiopia, uh, but they did make the African Cup. Uh, nevertheless. <laughs> okay, let's take a quick look at their players. And uh, they have a, a, a star, really, in Gaetana Kebede. Uh, I'm wondering, though, if he's been playing recently because he's, uh, well, he's not that old. He's 30 years old. Listen to this. Uh, in his 65 caps, he has 33 goals. So uh, a huge scorer for them. And uh, he scored in every campaign uh, in recent times. So uh, I may be mixing him up with someone else. I thought he was uh, he was kind of getting old, but uh, uh, it looks like he still has a few more years in him. Um, Emmanuel Gebra Michael is the kind of uh, up and coming forward, along with Dawa Hutessa, uh, they and, and uh, Abu Bakr Nasir. Um, um, scoring some of their goals here, but uh, 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 looking like they will be taking over when Katana Kabede uh, does age out too much. So, uh, yeah, so in, in, I was looking for this guy in the midfield, uh, Shimelis Bekale, who I believe is their captain. Oh, no, I guess Kabede will be the captain. Uh, Anyway, Bekele is a a senior player for them uh, in the midfield, and uh, Gautash Panon, uh, also kind of a senior player. And uh, let us move on from there. No, I'll mention defender Ashalu Tamin, uh, who is also in his 30s now. uh, some of their key players. Okay, let's move on to a summary and an overview of their form. Ethiopia naturally wants to regain the glory of the 1950s and 60s, but they grew increasingly weaker through the 70s and never really recovered. Uh, at times, they were downright feeble, getting knocked out in preliminary rounds. But overall, they're more of a middling team. Uh, and More specifically, they're a strong team at home but uh, an abysmal team on the road. They did reach the African Cup in 2013 and 2021. However, they seem to be well out of their league once there. In terms of form, uh, having spanned the range from title winners to feebly losing preliminaries, they've emerged, as I just said, as a middling team in recent times. 
they have recovered their uh, tough home form, which actually disappeared for a while uh, in the in the two thousands and, and forward. Uh, but re they remain very weak on the road. Uh, although neither is fully consistent. It is surprising that they reached the Cup losing all games away in 2021 because uh, that's what usually results in bottom bottom half of the table finishes. Uh, so going forward, it's definitely uh, their road record that they'll need to improve in order to reach Cups. That brings us to the end of our team-by-team -team review. We're going to move on to part three uh move on to part three the uh rankings so uh we have egypt in pot one um they're currently 32nd in uh fifa rankings and 42nd in e uh, elo rankings so they are well ahead of pot two guinea who is 80th in fifa rankings compared to 32 uh, well, I'll give a little summary at the end. Uh, and uh, 105th in FIFA rankings. Uh, pot 3 Malawi is 118th, uh, so 38 points behind Guinea in FIFA rankings, and uh, 133rd in e ELO rankings, that's uh, 28 points behind Guinea. And finally, and somewhat interestingly, uh, Ethiopia is... 140th in FIFA rankings, that is 22 behind Malawi. However, they are 122nd in ELO rankings, which puts them 11 points ahead of uh, Malawi and only 17 points behind uh, Guinea. So ELO rankings see Ethiopia as quite competitive here, uh, whereas FIFA rankings put them, uh, put them at the bottom. Um, okay, let's move on to their head-to-head -head records. And um, we have uh, Egypt uh, with a, a winning record over Guinea. That is three wins, one draw, and one loss. And uh, a winning record over Malawi too, but that that's quite tight with three wins, one draw, and two losses. Uh, but they have a commanding record over Ethiopia with ten wins, three draws, and two losses. Uh, most of those good results for Ethiopia coming in the early years. Uh, Guinea and Malawi. Uh, Guinea has a superior record with four wins, two draws, and one loss. And it's the same record against Ethiopia, four wins, two uh, draws, and one loss. So Guinea with uh, superior records to Malawi and Ethiopia. And finally, Malawi and Ethiopia. Um, Malawi has a, a better record than expected, I must say, with two wins, two draws, and zero losses. So even though ELO... Uh, puts Ethiopia ahead of Malawi. Uh, Malawi definitely has the better uh, the better head-to-head uh, -head record. All right, well, let's uh, just talk about the groups um, uh, a little bit here. And I'm sorry, I did not have the information uh, uh, in the document, so I just got to uh, find it here. Uh, Please hold. You will be given attention shortly. Okay, so, um, right, so uh, let's look at the group then. So it's a pretty interesting group. Uh, rankings and uh, uh, even head-to-head -head records clearly de delineate the pecking order uh, in support of the seeding. Uh, the only exception, as we've mentioned, uh, Ethiopia ahead of Malawi, uh, but that um, uh, uh, seems uh, actually, uh, for one of the rare times I agree with FIFA rankings more, 
uh, because Malawi does seem a bit stronger going into this. Uh, but even though those seedings may be accurate in terms of general strength, uh, all the teams here are quite inconsistent uh, from performance to performance. So there is kind of an exciting possibility of things not going uh, as expected. Uh, Egypt are certainly the strongest team and they, they come in, in into this qualifying in good form. Uh, they did disappoint by losing on penalties there in the 2021 African Cup final and in the final round of 2022 World Cup qualification. But uh, let's face it, they did reach those levels, which is far beyond any other team here uh, has, re has reached, uh, in recent times at least. So it seems like top spot is Egypt's to lose. However, they do sometimes, uh, they do sometimes squander that, as we saw three times in a row from 2012 to 2015, and, and uh, really going out to weak teams like Niger and Central African Republic. So I would always be a little bit nervous as an Egyptian fan uh, that they can, they can kind of collapse like that. Uh, that does seem to be behind them, but it remains kind of a lingering worry. Uh, Guinea and Malawi and Ethiopia are all kind of middling teams. They all reached the 2021 African Cup. Of course, they won't all do so here. Uh, Guinea is the strongest of them, and uh, they reach the cup more consistently than the other two. Uh, but sometimes they don't reach the cup, and they can't be relied upon uh, to do so. So they have uh, superior records, as we saw to Malawi and, Methi and uh, Ethiopia. Uh, and that's actually particularly relevant against Mali since they have two wins, one draw and zero losses since 2017. So uh, that record is more recent. Malawi typically finishes third in their group. Uh, their unusual feature, as we saw in the team by team, is they tend to do a bit better on the road than most African teams. But uh, that doesn't always happen, so it's hard to say that that will come into play here. Uh, Ethiopia is very much a team that's strong at home and weak on the road, but uh, sometimes they defy that too. Uh, all in all, I mean, I can't predict anything other than the seeding order, but, but I do feel like there's enough inconsistency among the teams that it could turn out a bit differently. Here is my official prediction. Egypt, Guinea, Malawi, and Ethiopia. Uh, third place, I would say, uh, seems the most contentious, but uh, in reality, the whole group uh, could possibly be contentious now. I am uh, going to do something unique in our podcast, which is, oops, uh, which is, I don't know the results. So I'm going to predict uh, kind of game by game here. And, uh, you know, maybe, uh, and see uh, if things are going as predicted. So uh, here we go. Uh Just going to uh, create a graphic here for the uh, YouTube uh, YouTube listeners. And here we go. So uh, the first game is Malawi and Ethiopia. Uh, <clears throat> in, the, in the race for third place or higher, uh, a very important game to both of them. They need to win. Uh, they need to win this to avoid finishing last. Uh, Malawi, uh, maybe not as strong at home, as a, uh, a lot of African teams, but Ethiopia notoriously weak on the road. So I have to give this to Malawi uh, to nothing. Uh, sorry, I'm just opening up the results. Uh, here we go. And the result is... Uh, Yes, Malawi winning 2-1 uh, over Ethiopia. All the goals were scored on penalties, and uh, Malawi's uh, Hellings or uh, Gabadino Mahango uh, got both of theirs, uh, I guess, their penalty taper. 
uh, penalty taker. And Malawi went 2 nothing up in the first half. So a fairly comfortable uh, win. Uh, Ethiopia getting their penalty goal in the second half. So uh, that is as expected. Egypt and Guinea. Uh, I'm, I'm always a bit insecure with Egypt, even at home, that they can lapse. But uh, I wouldn't predict it. Uh, though, so I'm going to say uh, Egypt 2 nothing at home over Guinea. And it is uh, 1 nothing at home. Uh, they got the, that single goal at 87. So uh, Mustafa Mohamed uh, getting that goal. Uh, he's the one who plays for Galatasaray. Uh, getting that goal, a late winner at 87. So uh, Egypt and Malawi uh, going into the second round with three points. The second round has uh, Guinea with Malawi at home. So again, if things are to go as expected, we would expect Guinea to win maybe 2 nothing or so. But Malawi is a bit better on the road and can surprise. So I'm going to change the 2 nothing to 2-1. Uh, uh, but I think it would be rash to predict Mali uh, sorry, Malawi, uh, getting anything out of this game, though not impossible. And the result is uh, Guinea won nothing, but uh, Malawi almost got something out of the game because uh, Guinea got their goal at 90 plus one. That was scored by Nabi Keita. Uh, I wonder if Guinea fans will be mad at me by saying he's not an outstanding player on the field. He does get things done. Though, and he got it done here with the late goal. Okay, finally, Ethiopia and Egypt. This could be quite interesting. Uh, despite the mismatch, Egypt being a much stronger team, uh, Ethiopia is uh, strong at home. They have a lot of history. They have a lot of pride in their home games. And uh, I would not be shocked uh, to see Egypt drop points here. Uh, shall I predict it? Uh, I'm going to madly predict a draw here although egypt is the stronger team and uh, let me see what happened oh my goodness it is a two nothing win for ethiopia so i was on the right track but not actually bold enough in my prediction uh um uh, was dawa hotessa uh, scoring at 21 and uh shimelis Bekeli, both players we introduced earlier on uh, scoring at 39 for a pretty comfortable victory, uh, a pretty comfortable victory there. But uh, honestly, not a shock, uh, not as much a shock as uh, maybe people who don't know Africa uh, will be shocked. But uh, uh, African teams are very strong at home, particularly uh, Ethiopia. And uh, Egypt should be able to survive, uh, survive that blow. It's not a death blow. Uh, by any point. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of our podcast. And uh, uh, you can, as we said, we uh, didn't cover some of the information in this podcast because we covered them in previous podcasts in, in January of this year. So if you want to recover those, you can look at the show notes. I put links in the show notes as well as the time where these teams, uh, Egypt, Guinea, Malawi, and Ethiopia, the time where they're discussed in their relevant podcasts. Um, and you can find all that uh, by going to soccerfiles.captivate.fm, but it might be easier just to type into the search engine uh, Soccer Files Canada. Uh, I would type in Soccer Files Canada. Soccer Files being with a PH. So soccer and then P-H-I-L-E-S uh, for soccer files. Well, thank you very much uh, for being interested and we will uh, see you next time. All the best. Bye-bye.